We spoke of Cornelius. Cornelius was an Israelite. He was a Hebrew himself. But I know what they teach. They teach that he was of the nations and he converted. No, that's not what it was. The nation of Israel, look at the sign just real quick. The nation of Israel was split into two parts. We have what is known as the southern kingdom, which is Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. And we had Ephraim, Manasseh, Simeon, uh, Zebulun, Gad, Reuben, Asher, Issachar, and Naphtali. They were known as the northern kingdom of Israel. Cornelius was from this, was from this group here. You understand? Peter, so you can understand that, Pastor Peter was dealing with the southern kingdom, Judah. The Apostle Paul dealt with the northern kingdom. Okay? Cornelius was of that group. People, because the people in the church don't know the history, they think that, that, that Cornelius was of, of the northern nation, and it wasn't. That was because of the law in the Bible where a man had, where the, the law meant that because she was married to an Israelite, she was married to the seed of Israel, and he didn't have any children with her, so a, uh, a, the brother had to go, according to the Bible, there's a law about raising up seed to that brother. That's the only reason why Ruth was mentioned. Right. Okay? So do you believe that if you're not a Hebrew, you can't come to the Father? No, it's not about, he, you, got, you got many nations that are Hebrews. Yeah, it's the I Israelites. I, I follow you. I follow you. Yeah. You got uh, you got several nations that are Hebrew. The Arabs are Hebrew. Yeah. The Chinese are Hebrew. The, the uh, Japanese are Hebrew. The so-called white people are Hebrew. But hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. The question is is about Israel. Give me Romans nine. Let me show you something. Okay, this will be very quick. Nine and seven. The Book of Romans, chapter nine, verse seven. Neither, because they are the seed of Abraham, are they called the children, but... Neither because they are the children of Abraham, because Abraham had several children. He had children by Hagar, and he also had children by a concubine named Keturah. Keturah. The, the, the people who were called Midianites. Mm. But in Isaac shall thou seed be called. But in Isaac shall the seed of God be called. So that knocked out Ishmael right there. Because Ishmael came from Hagar. So the Lord said, but I'm only choosing the seed of Isaac. Isaac had two sons, Esau and Jacob. You with me? So hold on now, read. Verse 8, that is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. Verse 11, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil. The children that he's talking about is Esau and Jacob. The two children that, Esau, that Jacob, I mean that uh, Isaac and Rebekah had. When you read Genesis the 25th chapter. Read. That the promise of God according to the election might stand. That the purpose of God according to the election, God was going to choose who was going to be his son. Not of what, but of him that call it. God called for Isaac. God. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. It was said unto Rebecca that the elder child shall be a servant to the younger child. This is the Bible we're reading. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. That's written in all the Bibles. Jacob have I loved, but Esau has, has I hated. That's what God said. What shall we say? Now they were both Hebrews, so you can understand. They were both the children of Isaac. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid! So is God unrighteous for choosing Jacob? Because when you read Genesis 25, it says, And the first came out red. That's them. So the Lord is not, He excluded them out. He excluded the Arabs out. He excluded the Chinese out. He excluded all nations. And the only people that he's talking about are the children of Jacob. If somebody is not a Hebrew, but they choose, they want to follow after God, do you believe that God will reject them? It doesn't matter what I believe, it's what God says. Let me read it again. I'm, I'm, no, no, no.
your interpret okay, your interpretation of that is that all nations who will to be God, who will to do his commandments are going to be saved into the kingdom? And I want you to interpret this. Okay. You say it's my interpretation. It's not a problem. Well, okay, when we say when we say interpretation, I'm gonna ride with you on that. When you say interpretation, what does that mean? So is there a proper way to interpret the Bible? Hold it, hold it. We're going to help you. Look, today is your day. Before we get this, give me the book of Peter's where it says no private interpretation. Then give me Isaiah 28 and 9. Watch this, sister. You should be taking these notes down. You should be writing this down. You with me? Okay. All right. Let's, let's read. Listen to this here. I'm going to show you. Uh, 1 and 20, where it says, no prophecy of the scripture. The book of Second Peter, chapter 1, verse 20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. The Bible is not just subject to people's interpretation. That's what it's saying. Let's read it again. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture, no prophecy of the Bible is of any private interpretation. You know what that means? I'm going to give you an example. When you go to church, they say, John 3.16, when it says, For God so loved the world. I'm going to use that as an example. They say, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You know the scripture. But they sing it, they bang tambourines, all that, when they bring it out. The word world there in John 3.16 was talking about the world of Israel. They weren't talking about the world of everybody. Now, hold it now. How do we prove that? Because that could be my interpretation against your interpretation, correct? Now, give me Isaiah. Isaiah... 28 and 9. Listen. The book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Who shall God teach knowledge? Oh, sister, are you listening? Okay, but I need you to listen though. Read it again. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Who shall God teach his knowledge to? Go ahead. So that's the question. And who shall he make to understand doctrine? And who will God make to understand the doctrine that's in his Bible? Go ahead. Them that are weaned from the milk. Them that are weaned from the milk. Meaning that they have to be in the Bible, studying the Bible. Not only studying the Bible, they have to be keeping God's laws. Let me show you that too. Well, I was bringing out a law earlier that you violated. Now I'm going to show you something. Okay, no, 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 no. Give me the book of Psalms, but the Arabs are not the people of the Bible. Okay. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Psalms, uh, no, 110. Uh, yes, what is it? 111 and 10. Psalms 111 and 10. Here's the reason why our people don't get the understanding of the Bible. This is the reason why, right here. Then we're going back to Isaiah. Psalms 111 verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. So if, so if we're not doing the commandments of the Bible, we are not going to have a good understanding of the Bible. You read that? You, you got that, sister? Now, let's show you how you get the proper understanding. Go back to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 10. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. You know what that means, sister? That means you cannot go to one scripture and say that's what the whole Bible is about. But that's what you're looking for. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, I got you, I got you. Hold, hold, hold on. When you say for all people, how would you get the understanding that all means everybody on the planet Earth? Or does all mean the people that are in front of them? I believe the Israelites. You're saying, I believe. From, from the interpretation I've got from the scripture, it's clear to me that the Israelites are the light of the world. And that we're the, we are... What world? This world. Uh, we are being used to draw, sorry, to draw in other nations. He's going to fix us first and let us be a light and, and do his laws and be a light and be blessed, the other nations will turn to our, uh, turn to our ways, plus turn to God's ways. You're, you're halfway right. Hold it. You're halfway right. And I'm going to tell you the wrong part. 
That's not going to happen until the kingdom. Because in the kingdom, the nation's going to be made to follow God's laws. Let me, let me show you that. Hold it, hold it. Give me Revelation. Let's get right to the point. Revelation 2, 27. Yes, read that. Revelation chapter 2, verse 27. This is how the nations are going to be. This is how we're going to be a light to all the nations on earth. This is how it's going to happen. Listen. And he shall rule them with a red of iron. And he, Christ, is going to rule the nations with a rod of iron. You know what that means? They're going into captivity. Give me Revelation 13, 9 and 10. Revelation chapter 13, verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Meaning these are God's judgments. That's what it means. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Sister, hold on, hold on, hold on. Will you? Was your people led into captivity? Okay, God has a judgment recorded in the Bible for that. But was all people on this earth led into captivity? No. So let's read it again, sister. Hold it. Let's, let's let this sink in, then I'm going to give it to the picture. If any man have an ear, let him have. Christ is speaking. Christ said, if you have ears on your head, hear what I have to say above everybody else's thoughts. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. There's, there's no maybes in that. That's the judgment. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. We cannot change that, sister. That's why a lot of our people are going to die, because they're trying to change God's judgment. Hey! Hold it. Hey! It's the patience and the faith of the saints. That's our repentance right there. We repented in Christ. That's the reason why we're going to get that. That's the reason why that judgment is going to favor us. There are people who are, aren't Hebrews, but that have repented and that are coming to the truth. They're, they're, they're there, not in large, large numbers, but they're there. I mean, I learned a lot from them. <laughs> I was introduced me to a lot of things, to be quite honest. Um, I didn't know before. Actually. So to repent, you would have to be doing what? Repent is, uh, uh, you have to apologize, obviously, apologize and... Apologize, no, no, apologize to who? Apologize to the people that have been offended. You, know? you have to... Uh, you no, but this was, I, I'm, I'm going to work with you, okay? I, I, just give me a second. If, if you just give me a second, I'm going to let you speak because I want to understand what you're saying. So to repent, you said, you said other nations, meaning outside of this time, they can repent also, right? Is what you're saying? But listen, uh, uh, repentance is also stopping what you were doing before and doing something better, what is right, you know, and uh, the, the spirit, you know, the, the spirit is leading, well, should be leading, and it's leading a minority of them really to think about reparations, to think about, I mean, um, there's some people, there are some, some people within Lloyd's, within Tate and Lyle, the sugar company, they've got, look, there's a minority, they've got a light and revelation, and then they've, they've gone on to their parents, and they're, they're talking to their parents, and some African American families have got reparations for what happened to their family, because of the conviction that Yah Yahura has spoken to them. Do you mind me speaking? Okay, repentance, repentance is acknowledging your sin against God, right? So to sin against God, you had to have broken God's commandments, right? Yeah, yeah. So are we on the same page with that? Are we on the same page with that? Repentance is repenting, asking God forgiveness for breaking his laws. Now my question to you, who were the laws given to? The Hebrew, uh, the Israelites. I'm going to read something for you, okay? Let's go to... All right, well stop, no, 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 no. This, this is your problem. Just stop for a second. Stop. I'm talking to you. You got. You got. To listen. You said it was only given to us, and then you said but. So when you put but in, you're negating what you said first. It's okay. Maybe somebody else. What's the scripture would you take me to to explain to me that what you're saying is valid? Because I'm gonna listen. You got to stop for a second. You got to stop. Everything decent in order. I'm telling the laws were only given to the Israelites, so they're the only ones who can sin against them. But not only am I telling you, I'm going to read it from here. Now, unless you can give me a scripture to say different, then if you don't abide with it, well, then how do you believe something that you can't find? Stop. Psalms, one, Psalms 147. Bring it out! Wait. Wait. Psalms 147, verse 19. I want you to listen for a second. He showed his word unto Jacob. That he is God, the Almighty who created all things. He shewed his word. His word is his Bible. Unto who? 
unto Jacob, oh no, unto Jacob, no, unto Jacob, who is the father of the twelve tribes of Israel. Read on. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. The statutes, the statutes are his laws, and his judgments are the penalties for breaking the laws, and he showed to who? Unto Israel, oh no, unto Israel, only Israel. Read on. He hath not done so with any nation. Shown on his laws, he has not done so with any nation. So I know what you're thinking right now. Your brain is saying, but what about everybody else? But God, who made you, made me, said, I gave my laws only to Israel. My statute and judgment only to Israel. As for the other nations, he said what? As for the other nations, he, he, he has not dealt so with any nation. He has not done so with them. He has not given his laws. You got to listen. My time to speak. We don't. And as for his judgments, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. So how could they repent to God if the laws were never given to them? The laws was going to give to the Israelites. But what the, what the deacon explained to you earlier was that any one person could take one scripture and make it sound any way. But watch this. It must be precept upon precept, right? Give me Joel 227. No, no, no. Now you got it. Okay, but don't worry. Okay, don't look. Listen, Mr. Stop. What's your name? Nicholas, can I say something? Just give me one second. You have to pick up your glasses, right? Okay, but listen, this, 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 you need to pick up your glasses. Those are the eyes you need to see. You need to see with your spiritual eyes right now, okay? Let's go, Joel 2, 27. Joel, chapter 2, verse 27. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. So you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. He is the most high speaking. I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. God said he's the God of Israel, and nobody else. So how do we get all nations? Because your mind, even though you know a little bit of who you are, you still have the doctrine of Christianity that it's all nations. I know where you get it from. For God so loved the world, that he gave us the only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in him, whoever can be saved. I'm telling you, spiritually, you're blinded, you don't see that. But whosoever is it? Do you believe that uh, if someone's not a Hebrew, they can't be saved? Romans 9. I'm not going to say I don't believe anything. I believe what the Bible says. I can show what the Bible says. Listen, I will find those scriptures. I will come back. It's really interesting. But I've really got to go. But I'm not saying... Yeah, I'm, I've got your track here. So I'm going to find those scriptures and maybe get in contact and try and ask some more questions. What, what should be happening to you right now, sister? And go ahead and look for the scriptures. We'll always be here teaching the Word of God, but one thing you should always know, whatever you think the Scripture means about everybody, you're wrong. There's precepts to explain it. He said, I'm the God of Israel and none else. Give me second Ezra 6. He said, I'm the God of Israel and none else. Listen to the Word. I am the God of Israel and none else. Nobody else. Let's listen to this last one. So, uh, second Ezra 6, 56, I think it is. I have to look at the Bible. 54, spittle. Oh, that's what we did right there. Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 54. And after this, if you need to leave or if you want to stay, it's up to you. This was... And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. All of us come out of Adam. Read on. And the people also, whom thou hast chosen. He said, out of all the people, I had a special people who he chosen. He's talking to you. He's talking to me. He's talking to the people on that sign. That are chosen. One second. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sake. The world was really made for our sake. The world is out of course. Read on. As for the other people, I want you to listen now. As for all the other people that's not the Israelites, which also come of Adam, they all came out of Adam also. Thou hast said, God, you said, not me said, not him said, not him said, nobody said, but God has said, that they are nothing. God said there wasn't nothing. That's in the Bible. I know right now, right now your mind is going to, can I compute? Because you still got that vice grip of Christianity. But we had to unlock that, open your spiritual eyes. Right. Read one more time. As for the other people, which also come with Adam, thou hast said, God has said, remember I didn't say it, that they are nothing. God said there was nothing. But be like unto spiritual. God said I compared them to spiritual. Spittle. I know it's hard for you. Yeah, you think you're going to find I know. I used to be on your side. I used to be standing right here doing the same thing I know. And then I want to look and realize I've been blinded for so many years. My spiritual eyes. What you have to do is be reborn. 
Okay, let me read something that you have here. I'll read what you have here. I'm just doing a little, I just want to show you a little something. Well, tell me where you at. This is, I've got a seafloor, and so I've got the Okay, so, all praise, that's good. And in the pocket, but what did we just read from? What did we just read from? Ezra's what? Second Ezra 6. Okay, so you go home and you read that, all right? It's high time for people to wake up out of sleep. I know what's happening, sister. I used to be on your side too. And one day I realized what I thought I knew, I had to be born again. As an adult, I had to be born again. And except when God said, I'm the God of Israel, none else, I used to say to myself, you gotta be joking. He made everybody. God said, I made everybody, but I only chose you. And as for the other nations, they mean nothing to me. And the kingdom is not theirs. The kingdom belongs to you. That's what the Bible said. That's why it seems controversial, because you've been taught everybody. It's never been about everybody. It's always been from the beginning of time about the Israelites. That's right. That's time for people to wake up out of you. Come out philosophies of Christianity. Come out to churches. It's not helping you. Come out of politics. Come from underneath the queen's skirt. Come out of all that foolishness and come back to the laws of God. I'm Eldon Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.